Hi there, we want to let you know that we just released a new version of our uh, Linux distribution for Windows 16 Linux. So this new version is based in Open uh, in OpenSUSE 15.3 and we install Open for 9, 10 and uh, ESI version 2206. Plus, you also will have the Dakota, uh, Pada view and Dakota for, for optimization. So the version, you can download it here, probably also in our YouTube channel. You will find a series of videos on how to, to manage with Windows System Linux and compile everything. In this short video, I just want to show you the fast way to install this, uh, this Linux distribution, but also how to enable Windows System Linux in your computer. So also a reminder that here you have the password, the, it will log in automatically to this user, but if you need the uh, root privilege, you, you have here the password and some guidelines on how to load open phone version 9, 10 and so on. Uh, the most important thing here to, to install Windows Existing uh, is this link. So visit this link and here you have all the installations instructions. Okay. So it's quite easy to install Windows Existing Linux and you come here. The only thing that you need to type is this. Okay. Then you have some other guidelines here, but just type this in a PowerShell or common prone and it will install Windows Existing. After you have that, you are ready to go. You can download this one or you can install your own Linux version. Just to show you something as well that I strongly recommend that to install this application, Terminal Preview. So if you come to your Windows store, <clears throat> here you can go Terminal Preview and you have it there. Okay. So this is a very handy application. Okay. With where you can load the PowerShell and the, the other versions of Linux. So see that here, this command that you have here, just type it there and that's all. Okay. It will install Windows existing Linux. It might require rebooting the system. You have some comments there, but the installation is very straightforward. In my case, it's not going to do anything because I already have it. But for instance, I already have a few machines installed. So if I type this in the window, see so that it's telling me that I have one version here. This is an old version running, uh, SUSE 15.3 and the one that we're talking about this video is this one based in open in open source 15.3. So see that for instance, after you install everything, if you come here, you have access to this machine. So see that I also have a Ubuntu, but I didn't enable that. Uh, we'll talk about that later. So if you click there, here we are, we'll open the, the Linux version. And this is a Linux installation within your windows uh, machine, which is sharing our resources. We did a lot of benchmarking and it, <clears throat> you, you, you didn't lose any, any performance. Now that you are here, you run open phone in the traditional way as you were running in, in Linux. Uh, also something that I really like about this is that you can access your Linux machine also from the file terminal and you can share files. Okay. With the usual limitations, remember that windows is not case sensitive. Linux is case sensitive. So be careful about that, but you can copy and move files in the traditional way and you can use windows problems, uh, programs into your Linux machine and vice versa. So it's very handy. Please read the, the, the guideline here. The, the documentation, you have a lot of things there. So now that I, that <clears throat> uh, address this one, let me get close here. So uh, the things that I want to show you is that, for instance, uh, in the Windows store, store you can also, uh, you, you can download this Windows terminal, but also you can install different uh, Linux versions. So for instance, by default, when you install Windows existing Linux, uh, it will install Ubuntu, okay? But if you want to install OpenSUSE, just to look here, and you can install now the versions of OpenSUSE. So this is the one that I installed. So actually I have both of them installed, but something that I want to stress that you need to install this, okay, in order to, this in, in order to, to run the, the, the virtual machine, the Linux distribution that you can download here. Okay. You just need to import it. So you go here and then you import that machine and you're ready to go. So let me go here. 
and it's very important here just to show you the help. So when you run the help of this command WSL, uh, you have a lot of information. So to import a Linux distribution like this, it's relatively easy. You know? So you type WSL dash dash import, you give it a name, where is the location and where do you want to install that? Okay. So you need to give the path. Okay. The one that you have in your operating system. So this is everything is explained here. So for instance, you go how to import any Linux distribution and see that you have it here. So for instance, here, you give it this name, the location where, where you want to install that. And then where do you have the, the, the file, the tar file or tar G set file. In this case, the one that you can download in our website is the tar G set file. So you just type this in the command and then it will enable that <clears throat> it, it will install that virtual machine. And then you're going to have it available here. So the name that you gave the distribution name, you're going to have it here. Uh, one thing that maybe you will need to reboot your system. Okay. Sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't happen, but don't be afraid about that. So you install that and that's all. Uh, also to mention something that as, uh, as I say, it, it is not compulsory to install any additional uh, Linux distribution. Just do it if you want to play around and if you want to install uh, you, your own applications or do some benchmarking. But I want to, to show you something as well that when you have those versions that come with by default, that for instance, the Ubuntu version that comes by default with Windows system, you can launch it here. And when you launch that, see that it will do the initial installation here. Okay. So I haven't done anything and see that it's going to all do the initial installation. The initial installation means that it is only, it, it is going to create the default user. So you give it a, a user. So I would call it CFD and give password CFD one, two, three, four, confirm your password and see that you created your user and you are ready to go. So this is your Ubuntu version and you can close here. Okay. Let me go open again here and see that now I have my Ubuntu version and that's all. Okay. And then you can start to install applications here. The same will be after, for instance, if you decide to install any of these open source versions, you will need to access that access that here. So as you go here, open source, I should have it somewhere here. Oh, ta, 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 ta. just click there and see that <clears throat> it go, it's going to, to, to do this at top press enter. Okay. So you don't press anything. It's not going to do anything. And then here you just need to create the default user. So this is license and so on. So you create CFD, CFD one, two, three, four. CFD one, two, three, four. Okay. So you are happy with that. Press there and that's all you created your user. Okay. So let me close, close here and we should have, sometimes you will need to reboot. Let's see, but okay. So it doesn't appear here it means that you will need to reboot your system and then you're, you, you, you will see that, but you can launch it. For instance, I can go here and I can launch it here. Okay. So I press again here and now you have it there. And at this point you can install your application. So see that this is a standard application. Okay. The standard installation is a very compact installation. You have the minimum, uh, drivers and libraries and so on. So then you need to install more stuff to, to install your application. So if you want to install open phone, just follow the instructions in the website. Okay. They do work. Okay. However, it is easier as you install our virtual machine or our Linux distribution. Okay. So now let me show you how to, to install that Linux distribution. Okay. So you have the commands there in the documentation for, but in this case, let's say that I want to install that Linux distribution. Okay. Uh, here. Indeed, where I have more space, this is the tar file. Okay. So see that I have it there. Okay. So just to do something as well, these are the two 
uh, versions that I just created. So if you want to erase that, I don't need them anymore. Register, okay. And I will erase Ubuntu. <clears throat> and see that has been erased. And I will do the same with the other one. Okay, so I don't need this one either. So these are the ones that I created just to demonstrate. And I have my standard one. So this is the old one that I have with 15.3. Eventually I will erase it. I will move just for 15.4. And just to show you how this is work. Now, so when you download that, that file from our website, you're going to get this star. This is 12 gigs, okay? Uh, just to point out that this installation, the maximum file size, size is 250 gigs, okay? Then you will run out of space, but you can resize that. Uh, here you have this, the instructions how to expand, okay? It's relatively easy, so I will prepare another video to, to, to show you how to do, but you have the steps there and it's relatively easy. So it will expand to 250 according to the information that you put, put in, but when you have it, it's not that big. So see here that in this case, the files that it uses is this one. So see that it's a X4 BHDX and see that this is 14 gigs. And if you keep adding file information, it will grow up. So it's not going to take your whole space and you can install different of these machines. Okay. So for instance, did you think that in the machine that we're distributing, okay, uni open for nine or another version, just cancel that version and that's all. Okay. So you go there and see that I have everything there. So if you need this and this, cancel that, and you can reclaim some space, but it's not that much that it takes So open phone. Okay, so let me go how to, to show you how to install this. So here you need to move in this terminal window and in the command prompt. Okay, so let's say that I know that I need to go to D and I want to install that in WSL. So see that here you have your your compressed file where we have the distribution. And at this point, we need just to follow the instructions here, import. Also, you can export that. So you can modify the, this Linux, uh, this distribution, or can you, you can do whatever you want with your distribution, any other, and you can export it and distribute it in the same way. Okay, so do, you can deploy that in, in, in your network. It's relatively easy. So also you have the instructions here, how to export, so it will be, here you have the same command that it's exporting somewhere there. Okay, this one build a constant uh, custom distribution, and you have all your commands there. So, in our case, we want to import. Okay, so see that you type WSL import the name that you want to give, the location where you want to extract that one, and then the, the tar file. So, let's go and let's do it double us import i want to call it let's say banana susa okay that is my name and then i will extract that one is located here wsl okay the file is ws so see that okay uh, uh, let me go a minute. So it should be, okay, the location. Okay, sorry. So I want to extract that one in this folder, banana susa. And the file name is this one. Okay, so import name that you want to give to that machine, then where do you want to extract and where do you have that compressed uh, Linux distribution? You press enter and see that it's going to do all the magic. So this probably can take something five minutes. So, but see that created the folder and now it, it is extracting that virtual machine there. And then you are ready to go. So let's wait a little bit and let's see what happens when this is done. Okay, so in my case it's done and see that extracted everything, you have it there, so see that you have the file there and at this point you are ready to use it. So as you go here, you might have it here. So see that you can see here, just close it and open a new one. If when you open a new one, you don't see it, it's likely that you will need to restart your, your, your system. In this case, see that we have it here. But if you don't see there after you open a new terminal preview, uh, reboot your system and see that that's all. You are now in your new 
Linux distribution, okay, and you can access all the information here. So see that you have everything there. And here you work if you were working in Linux, okay, you have all the libraries and so on. So in the video description, I will put, I will put some of the necessary libraries if you want to compile open phone, okay, but just follow the instructions in the website, open phone website, okay, for both open phone distributions, okay. But there are a few, maybe the, I think there are a couple of extra libraries that you will need to install, but I will pull that and then the basic commands how to import. Also, you can export that this library. So when you do things and you want to keep back up, you can do something similar like we did here using importing, but instead of importing, you will export it. Okay. So for instance, I have my command here. So if you want to export it, <clears throat> you have it here. So WSL export, give it a name and then the location where you want. Okay, not given, this is the name of that one, how it's called, okay? When you type, for instance, WSL LV, so you use this name and then give a location where you want to save the tar file, okay? And that's all, it's relatively easy. So these commands also will put it in the comment section. So now that you have this, for instance, let me close here. Okay, and WSLB. Be careful also when you run this one, you, you, you need to have this version two. Okay, so let me go shut down to stop all the machines that are running. And at this point, for instance, if I don't want to have that anymore, you go on register, banana, SUSE, and it's gone. Okay, so go here and see that it is gone. You reclaim your space. So very handy, okay, I rest strongly. And this is the way, at least in my portable computers, how now I'm working with, with open phone. I don't want to have any more the dual boot, the partition or the virtual machine. It takes a lot of space and, and hardware. Okay, so the only disadvantage that you have with this is that uh, you don't have all the graphical user interface, so but that is not a problem. You can run uh, in the same way. You just need to be familiar with the terminal window. So I think at this point I'm done with this short explanation. Okay. Uh, so remember that we have to video. So you have a full description that will all, all the instructions and so on. So this is quite lengthy and this short video just to show you fast how to install everything. So just to recap, remember you need to, to install Windows subsystem. Okay. Follow this step and you only have one step to install that is like this in a power terminal. Then also install very important, uh, <clears throat> term, uh, terminal preview. Okay. This is a very handy application. So install this. And then as the, after the, you install this one, you're going to get this small application and here you will launch Windows Assisting Linux or any other version that you have installed. Okay. By default, when you install this one, it will install Ubuntu. Okay. But it's the one you can cancel that you don't need it. So you, you just uninstall this application in at remove programs. Okay. Also open SUSE. You need to install those applications, but it's the one just to play around. You have here in the store, you can look for the version. So for instance, you have here Ubuntu. Okay. Just can install any version and the same way with OpenSUSE. Okay. But you need to install those. Okay. And from our website, okay. Download this image and you just need to import it. Okay. Following the instructions that you have in the website or recall this video. So you go here, import as simple as this, and then you are just ready to go. So that's all. Thank you very much for your attention. And I hope you find this useful later. I will show you another video how to expand. So remember that this is limited to 100 to 250 gigabytes, which I think is more than enough to run a small cases, but as you need more space, uh, you can expand it, but also you can install multiple of these machines. Okay. So thank you very much and see you next time. Bye.